Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are on to week six of our study in AE501. So let's just jump right into the roadmap of where we're going this week. So to pull up our lecture discussion, uh, week six, we are going to continue a little bit of our discussion on our vector integral and vector differential calculus. So that's these first three videos. Uh, you'll see our continuing our calculus series. Let's just first take a look at this first video, um, calculus 11. So this is going to be looking at triple integrals. So remember, we've already seen several integrals in the previous weeks, right? We saw the normal integrals. We saw line integrals. We saw double integrals. So now let's look at triple integrals, which are going to basically be um, talking about how to calculate a integrand over some sort of volume and accumulate or integrate that over the, this type of volume. So again, triple integrals, this is a pretty straightforward topic. So you can see it's just a 27 minute long lecture with some notes to kind of get you situated with how a triple integral works. With that in our bag, we are then going to go ahead and move on to di the uh, divergence theorem, sometimes referred to as the divergence theorem of Gauss. Um, we're going to see that this is actually a really fun way to relate a triple integral of the divergence of a vector field to a surface integral or a flux integral over a similar equivalent surface. So again, um, I think once you watch this video, it'll make sense what I'm talking about here. But what we can th think about is this is really pulling together a lot of the items we talked about previously. Previously, right? Previously, we talked about what the divergence of a vector field was. We talked about what a surface integral or a flux integral was. And in fact, right before it, we talked about a triple integral. So you're going to see that the divergence theorem links a lot of these things together and allows you an easy way to trade off and decide which type of an integral would you rather evaluate in different circumstances. So this is a quick discussion on how to do that using the divergence theorem. Then we're going to jump into another theorem, which is really similar, actually, in the sense that it allows you to trade off between two different types of integrals. So this is the discussion on Stokes's theorem. So we're going to see that Stokes's theorem is actually going to uh, relate a surface integral of a curl of a vector field to a closed line integral. So again, this is one of these things where we're tying together a lot of these things we talked about earlier, surface integrals, line integrals, curls, all of those are going to be coming back. And in fact, this has a nice tie in back to another discussion we had um, a few lectures ago of Green's theorem. So I'll let you watch this quick little 23 minute video to get you oriented with Stokes's theorem and how all of those pieces tie together. But long story short, these three videos here, I think will finish up our calculus discussion for AE501 this quarter. Then what I want to jump into is um, the second half of this week is looking at uh, a very quick introduction to Fourier analysis. And um, Fourier analysis, maybe as a quick preface, is becoming one of the more interesting um, areas of mathematical study, particularly with the with respect to um, kind of AI, ML, big, uh, big data, data science. Surprisingly, Fourier analysis um, plays its way uh, in here. So I would like to lay some of the groundwork here. We're not going to be able to look at how this applies to some of those AI ML applications, but at least we can look at some of the mathematical foundations and background. So the first video here is the introduction to Fourier series. And basically this is how to take any function and write it as a infinite series of sinusoidal functions. So you're going to take some arbitrary function. It can be as complex or as simple as you like it. And we're going to break it down into basically constituent sine waves. And we're going to add them all up and we're going to see how they come to approximate or reproduce the original function. So that's the idea with the Fourier series is you have some continuous function and you would like to now represent it with a bunch of continuous sine waves. Perfect. That's going to lead now to a extension of this, this idea now to a discrete Fourier transform where instead of looking at continuous representations of these functions, we're going to be looking at discrete samples of this. And this again is very, very helpful, especially in our digital age nowadays where everything is actually discrete. We're going to see that the discrete Fourier transform is, yeah, you can think of it as a uh, discrete version of the continuous Fourier series that we're looking at previously. And then once we have this discrete Fourier transform down, we're going to see that it is an incredibly powerful um, algorithm, but it's actually incredibly computationally intensive. And some really smart people came up with a fast way to implement the discrete Fourier transform. And this is referred to as the fast Fourier transform. So we'd like to spend a little bit of time looking at that. And in fact, we're going to have a homework assignment that relate these two together um, to kind of drive the point home. So with that being said, this is the roadmap for this week. We're going to finish up our discussion on calculus, and then we're going to jump into Fourier analysis and uh, spend the second half of that looking at some examples. Um, so with that, let's go over and look at the homework. 
All right, so if I pull up homework number six, let me drag this over to the other screen so we can see it. Okay, so here's homework number six. Um, <clears throat> problem one is, this is pretty straightforward. It's basically just take the divergence theorem. I'm gonna give you a vector field here. I'm gonna give you a surface here. Basically, uh, it's just applying the divergence theorem. And again, I think once you watch the video, I do an example of this, which is very similar with a different, obviously, uh, vector field and a different surface, but the idea is similar. It's basically looking at, um, I'm gonna give you a surface which is a box, so there are six different sides to it. So part A is basically just, how do you parameterize each of those six different sides individually? And then for part B, go ahead and compute this flux integral um, over those six surfaces and add them all together, right? We're gonna pretend that you don't know what the divergence theorem is, and we're just gonna blindly calculate by brute force this uh, surface integral. Then in part C, we're gonna then also compute this triple integral of the divergence of this vector field um, over uh, this volume that's enclosed by this box. And then I'd like you to compare your results from part C with part B and tell me how does that relate to the divergence theorem. And again, it's one of these things where I think you watch the video, this is gonna make a lot of good sense. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on problem one. Same thing with problem two. Problem two is almost identical to problem one, except now it's dealing with Stokes' theorem, which again is video number three of this week. So again, watch the video. I think this is going to make sense. I don't think there's any gotchas on this, so I'm not going to spend too much time. I'll let you read what the problem statement is, and I think it's pretty straightforward. It's again, compute something by brute force, compute something by brute force, and then compare the two and tell me if they're related. Okay, where it gets interesting is uh, problem three. So problem three is, like I said, um, jumping into the Fourier series, and I think this is some of the more exciting um, math we're gonna be doing this quarter. So Fourier series is a lot of fun. I'm gonna give you a piecewise function right here. So you'll notice here that this is actually, it's it's not continuous, it's, uh, it's piecewise continuous, but not continuous over this entire domain. What I'd like you to basically do now is see if you can kind of plot what this thing looks like, and then we're going to compute some Fourier coefficients um, that are going to allow us to basically try to approximate this function with a whole bunch of sine waves. So one thing you're going to have to do down here in part D is, okay, we're going to see in Fourier uh, series that really uh, it's an infinite series. So you have to take an infinite number of sine waves and add them up. And obviously that's not practical or tractable. So instead we are gonna continue or uh, consider what are called partial sums. So partial sums are, I'm gonna not sum from one to infinity. I'm gonna sum from one to some capital N where this capital N could be, it could be one, two, five, 10, 25. However many terms you want is uh, basically you're going to be truncating your infinite series at a certain level and obviously incurring some type of error when you do this. So what I want you to do in part D is make a MATLAB function that will go ahead and compute this partial sum. So you tell it the number of elements or capital N that you want. And this function will return uh, the approximation of this in basically, well, not the approximation, it will return this inf this this finite series where you add up to a certain number, big N, okay? And then what we're gonna do to part D is just check that your function in part D looks right. Basically, you know, tell it I want only one term and plot it. What does that look like? Tell it I want two terms or five tens or 10 or 25 terms. And we're gonna see what does this partial sum look like as you start increasing N. And then once you've got that down, what I'd like you to look at in part F is then ask yourself, well, how bad is this partial sum SN to the actual function F, right? You have the actual function F up here. We have a partial sum down here. One way to measure the difference between the two is just integrate the squared error between them, right? So basically um, I would start with N equals one, right? So you're gonna have a really simple expression right here. It's maybe just got one sine wave in it. You're gonna now look at how does that one sine wave differ from this piecewise function up here. You're gonna square all the errors. You're gonna integrate or probably add, right? You're gonna accumulate all these together and you're gonna get an error. So this is gonna give you the error if you only had one term in your um, partial sum. And then just start cranking up n. Do another data point where you crank up n equals two and figure out how much error do you incur if you have two terms. And then calculate as you start increasing the number of terms in your partial sum, what happens to this error? Does it go down? Does it increase? Does it asymptote out to something? That's all I'm asking for down here. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of the, the fun part of this is looking at 
how does your partial sum start to approximate the function f as you increase the number of terms in your um, Fourier series? Okay, so problem three is, is uh, I, again, I think it's fairly straightforward on um, a continuous Fourier series. Problem four now is looking at a discrete Fourier series or a discrete Fourier transform or a discrete fast Fourier transform. A lot of these things, um, the terminology gets gets intertwined and intermixed. In the video, I talk a little bit more about the terminology, so maybe I won't spend too much time here. All I'd like to say here for this problem is I'm going to provide you a sample of two human voices, so a discrete set of samples of audio um, components. Um, so first thing I'll maybe mention is where can you get these two samples of, of data? So in the description of this YouTube video, there's going to be a link to um, the GitHub page that I store all the data. So if you go to that video or the description, you go to that link, it should take you to this page right here where there's going to be a folder. It's AE501 homework six. If you come here to problem four, you'll see here are the two files that you need to download and you're going to be playing with them. These are just two audio samples. One is an adult saying something like, I think it says Dada. And then another is a baby saying the same thing, saying Dada. And now what I'd like to look at is how can you import these two um, uh, audio files into MATLAB? And then how can I plot these, uh, you know, discrete samples? You'll see some audio signals and you're basically going to see a, a, a visualization of those audio samples. And now I'd like to use a discrete Fourier uh, transform. In particular, I'd like to use MATLAB's FFT function, which is a fast Fourier transform implementation of a discrete Fourier transform, and basically just look at these the results. And again, I don't want to give too much of this problem away. If you watch the videos, I, I pretty much go through, a, and again, a very similar example to these. So I would just recommend watch the videos, and then parts C, D, and E should make sense. But long story short, what you're going to see is hopefully you you can see some differences in these audio samples in the frequency uh, domain after we operate on it using the FFT uh, function in MATLAB. So again, I know that's a little nebulous right now, but I think once you watch the Fourier series videos, this problem is going to make a lot of sense. And this is a lot of fun because like I said, it's sort of your gateway into a lot bigger and more exciting problems in AI and ML uh, down the line. So. With that being said, I think that is week six. Um, uh, let me know if there anyone has any questions. Otherwise, um, I'll look forward to talking to people during office hours and uh, hope everything goes well. All right, I'll sign off for now. Talk to you later. Bye.